All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our episode with uh, Gary Huther, founder of the Arugas Company, uh, based in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I have my co-host here, uh, Church and Lichtenstein, and uh, you have Hello, myself, everybody. Nate Foshman. We are uh, working together here for the Free Mind podcast, and we're going to have Gary on here to talk about his history and kind of starting the uh, the Arugas Company. We have a multi-state on-premise restaurant chain that we'd like to talk to. And Gary, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Very good. Very good. Well, hey, we appreciate you taking the time today and wanted to kind of jump into, you have a really unique history and located in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, but you're also stretched out to seven different states now with your uh, full service restaurant chain of uh, Arugas. Kind of give us a little uh, history of kind of pre-Arugas, how you got started into the business world and got lit with such an entrepreneurial spirit. All right. Well, well, uh, cool. It kind of dates back into, into high school. Uh, you know, I guess for, first, my dad was very entrepreneurial, and I think uh, he rubbed off a lot on me uh, th- through, through my years, especially my younger years. But, uh, but starting about, you know, uh, love for restaurants, uh, I actually worked at the Sierra Madre uh, all through high school as my first venture into, into restaurants. Um, a- as I progressed through restaurants, uh, I ultimately um, ended up transferring out of restaurants into Snap-on Tools. Um, my father was in Snap-on Tools, and some of my uh, relatives were. So, uh, so I ventured into Snap-on Tools as a second van uh, program. Did well into that. Got my own franchise. Uh, went to Annapolis. Uh, converted that one franchise into two franchises. Uh, sold those. Moved back to Harrisburg. Uh, took over a franchise here. Ended up with four franchise routes here. Um, you know, and then I ended up selling them to either my employees or other Snap-on dealers to go buy a sports bar. Uh, so, so I ventured back in. Um, I think that that Snap-on was, um, you know, a great opportunity for me to learn how to run a business. So it got me involved in structure, um, in, in learning to re- read numbers, to, to run profit and loss statements. And I really think that's one of the things that effectively helped me start when I went into the restaurant business. Because um, I think a lot of time, in the restaurant world, things aren't look at, looked at as dollars. Uh, inventories might not be done. Money might, might be taken from the register. All those types of things where if you were really running a business uh, the true way, uh, you wouldn't be doing those things. Inventories would be done. There'd be accountability. And Snap-on taught me a lot of those structures that I brought over into, into the restaurant world. And uh, that's what kind of led me into, into the restaurant world of opening our first store and, uh, and from there. Absolutely. At what point did, uh, so you, you have a, a combination of, of corporate and franchise stores, kind of what, what point did you realize with that one store you knew you, you had a, had a real gem there that was, that was a franchisable item? Well, uh, you know, I, we, we actually won a contest. So, so in 2008, we opened uh, the first Arugas. Uh, we, we went in with, you know, again, with, the, with the structure, with, with branding, you know, with one location, we had already established branding. Uh, in that, in 2000, so so I guess next step was one day a, a dream was always the franchise. That was the the ultimate goal. Um, in 2010, we entered America's Next Top Restaurant Franchise Contest. Uh, it was 250 restaurants from across the country. Uh, they narrowed it down to 25 finalists in which they visit. They were with me on a Wednesday. They were in Texas on Thursday, California on Friday. Uh, the grand prize was they paid for you to get franchise. Uh, so we ultimately won that contest in 2010 and. Uh, we was set up with a company called the Franchise Edge that took us through the process of setting up an FDD, establishing manuals and those type of things. So um, in two years, we had won that contest. Uh, we were going on opening our fourth location. Mechanicsburg was under construction. Uh, and, and we had some other restaurants that had 10 or 20 that were in the contest. So it was a real, real, real nice win for us. I think it, it, uh, it made us think we, we're, we're doing something right, obviously. Um, and, and that was kind of the next step of how we got into franchising uh, from maybe a dream to a reality. Gary, was that, was that on TV? It was not. Um, it was actually put through Cisco Foods. Oh, so yeah. they put uh, the mostly their top operators from, from almost every distribution center. I think the only states that weren't in it was Alaska. The back end of things, Gary, tell us a little bit about the back end with, uh, with your commissary. I think it's a very unique uh, position you have where each location obviously is not producing uh, necessarily everything that they're inside, but you are, you also are controlling the, the supply chain flow as far as that goes. Yes, definitely. You know, at original locations, we were making a tremendous amount of our products from scratch in our kitchen. Uh, you know, monitoring labor, monitoring consistency, those type of things. 
um, you know, are always challenges for, for every restaurant tour, let alone if you're doing it in multiple stores and managing multiple people. So we opened a small commissary right across from our original, uh, the original Ruga's location on Route 22 uh, and self-distributed to our corporate stores. Um, after selling our first franchise, we thought, you know, how, how are we going to get our stuff there? Uh, so that kind of led to the next investment, which is uh, a big investment, was our, is our corporate office uh, in Harrisburg uh, off of Paxton Street. Uh, it's 25,000 square foot office and commissary. Um, we have, um, you know, our, our corporate office function is there. We have a mini Arugas inside uh, where we do training for our management teams as well as franchisees when they come down. Uh, then in the back is, is our large state-of-the-art commissary where we now produce uh, 18 items from scratch that are now distributed to seven states, uh, as well as our, our newest addition going into giant grocery stores. We're now in 70 giant grocery stores um, with our crab pretzel, buffalo pretzel, uh, hand bread at pepper jack cubes and mozzarella triangles. Um, so, so the next step in that was kind of consistency um, in that we're also able to, to get better buying power as we're buying in larger box. We're controlling that consistency um, and we're making sure that the product's the same in every Arugas. Excellent. That's, that's definitely, I mean, having those the multiple states and, and you service all your states out of the same commissary or is that, is there different ones throughout? Yes, we're, we're all out of the same commissary. So uh, our, our, our logistics take it through, uh, through one main Cisco house and then it's shipped out to the other houses. So we go into Cisco Central Pennsylvania. From there, it's shipped to Cisco Boston, Cisco Long Island and Cisco Orlando. Excellent. Talk about some of the unique products I, I know uh, with the uh, with the Impossible Burger. Some of the things you you're kind of leading the charge as far as that goes in your in your regions. Yeah, yeah. So so you know uh, there's been a big plant based phase, and, and we were always looking for a great vegetarian option at Arugas. And um, I think going probably back five years ago now, we were the first full service restaurant on the East Coast uh, to carry the Impossible Burger. Uh, we liked it because it fit what we did, but gave an option uh, for for a vegetarian option that fits our concept. Uh, we then since transformed the Impossible Burger into our chili, uh, as well as being on the burger. So we've utilized it in some other ways. Um, and even a, a non-vegetarian or someone that traditionally doesn't eat plant-based, uh, we've heard great things about our chili that, um, you know, it's a phenomenal chili. And it's really hard-pressed to tell that you're not eating traditional ground beef, if that's something you're looking for. Gary, how did, how did you initially hook up with uh, Impossible? So uh, before they got big, they were looking for people to partner with them to get started. So they actually reached out to me. Um, they had saw our green certification, um, which I don't think I mentioned. We're the first certified green restaurant uh, in Pennsylvania uh, as, as well. We've done that since day one. We've never had styrofoam on our property. Um, our fryer oil is turned into biodiesel fuel. Um, so I think they saw some of those attributes and were looking to to partner. So we had a, we had a small amount of stores. They were still growing. So um, oddly, I met uh, met the guy as a gentleman named Jake, who who I saw later on Wahlburgers selling part of the company to Marky Mark um, <laughs> at a Starbucks in Chicago at the NRA show because they didn't even have a booth yet. Um, so it was, it was pretty cool. We got some test products before it was out to the public, um, and and we just thought it was very innovative. And we were really amazed how it tasted. Yeah, I remember you talking about how, you know, if you didn't tell me, I might not even recognize that it wasn't ground beef when it first was releasing. Yes, and you can even cook it to temperatures to make it look medium or medium rare yeah. uh, as well. So it's pr pretty pretty interesting stuff. And now they've ad since advanced the line, and I think they're doing chicken nuggets now and all types of stuff uh, starting to come out that way. With In, in regards to the food, uh, you, you uh, mentioned recently that uh, you're partnering with the Giant Company. And uh, working with some some kind of on premise off premise collaborations with the grab and go sections and kind of elaborate a little bit about how that how that program came about and, and where things are going with it. Yeah, so so uh, very exciting. It's 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 always been kind of a, a dream goal for us as well as to take some of the products that we're making and get into the retail market, especially with a company like uh, like Giant. Uh, so very very honored for them to take us on as a partner. Um, you know, we, we we worked with them for a couple months letting them tour our commissary, try the product. And uh, we settled on four items, you know, kind of items that we're known for as well. Um, our, we make our pretzel dough from scratch in our commissary and shape it in the shape of an A. Uh, so we have a crab pretzel and a buffalo pretzel that's now available in the take and bake section. So take, just take the lid off, put the metal container in your oven, and, uh, and, and you're ready to rock in about 10 minutes. We also hand bread our mozzarella and pepper jack cubes that are also available um, next to those items in the refrigerated section in the back by the deli. 
uh, for a cake and bake. And, and you can reheat our cheese in the oven. Uh, my preferable way is to reheat it in the air fryer. Um, both right now, the, the both cheeses are running for only $5, um, and then the pretzels are for $8. Uh, but starting November 6th, we'll be on bonus buy, running our pretzels for $6. So, uh, so get out there and see. So we're very excited about that, and you know, hopefully we're able to produce some more so we continue to grow uh, in, in the giant uh, network. That's awesome. And also, I mean, uh, you're kind of expanding outside of the stores now um, to kind of different venues and things like that in the Hershey area. Elaborate a little bit about the different stands you have and taking those, again, taking those items and those menu items, featuring them outside of your actual locations and using that effectively as a kind of cross collaboration uh, for your own business. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have some stands in uh, the Hershey Giant Center Stadium, uh, as well as FMB Park. Um, so I guess kind of just I'll loop how that kind of works in. I think you know, I, we kind of look at it, the Arugas ecosystem is what we call it. You know, we have Arugas as, as a brand, as an entity, and then we have some pillars off of it. You know, first being our corporate restaurants, next being, as we mentioned, you know, our franchise locations uh, throughout the seven states that we have, um, uh, as well as the stands that we have. So we have uh, your Arugas Wing Shacks at the two stadiums I mentioned. One of the, the cool thing at the Hershey Stadium uh, that we just added now is our hand bread at mozzarella. So now the stadium, the stand really consists of, of our products from our arugula light beer to our French fries uh, to six of our wing sauces and dressings uh, on our wings or boneless wings. Um, now the hand bread at mozzarella triangles. So you can really get a big arugas experience at the stadium. As a matter of fact, I was just at Disney on Ice with my daughter and I had a nice tray of uh, all, all of our goodies while we were watching uh, Mickey Mouse uh, on there. But um, so that that's kind of one 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 extension of, of the brand as well. But we're taking the commissary items and putting them now in retail in stands and our restaurants and our franchise locations. Uh, another another spoke of that is we have our own vodka, Segura vodka, which is uh, Arugas backwards. If we say we say if it starts to say Arugas, you had too much. Um, but uh, we're we're in sixty plus state stores with those, and you can get that vodka at any Arugas location uh, in the seven states as well. So. So pretty, pretty cool um, there too. We just released a flavor line of uh, four additional flavors. Um, we have a Valencia orange, a citrus, a black raspberry, uh, and a vanilla. Uh, they're all made with our Segura vodka as the base, but then infused with fresh and dried peels. Um, we're not adding any fake flavoring or added any sugar. Great uh, flavored vodkas. I sometimes say if you drink a flavored vodka by itself, a lot of times it tastes very perfumey. Uh, our vodkas by themselves taste excellent. They're very smooth. You can really get the, the aromas of the fruit uh, through them as well. Gary, in my attempt to uh, squeeze fish into every podcast, uh, when I was down this summer for Hershey, I did see your branding and, and you said your light beer. Uh, are you are you trying to get your vodkas into those, uh, you know, into the stands at the parks as well? Or is this, you know, just food and light beer happen to be a bonus? Um, we're, we're trying to get our stuff everywhere. It, it seems that, that, that the vodka, they're not selling any liquor in our stands yet. Vodka has, the liquor hasn't mainstream. I see it's, I see it's really starting to be with the can sales. Um, so that, that, that is something we would love to get into, but, uh, but right now I'm, uh, the two stands don't, don't have liquor offerings. Yeah. That, those RTDs, the, the canned cocktail drinks is, I mean, it, it seems like with everything you have going on, would that be maybe a logical next step for you guys with, with the vodka line? Yes. Yeah. We, we are actually uh, working with uh, our partner boardroom spirits on that a, as we speak. Um, and a, actually I kind of forgot to mention on, on our vodka, our vodka is available to, you know, to any other restaurants or bars. Um, but we, we are in the Harrisburg Hilton as well. Uh, if you get a dirty martini there, they're using our Segura vodka with stuffed blue cheese olives. Excellent. Oh, wow. Are you, are you, so you saying in all seven States where you have Arugas, you're also have the li the liquor distribution? Correct. Yep. So you get Segura Vodka at every uh, every Arugas and now the, the four flavor lineups as well. Kind of talk a little bit about uh, for us, kind of the current state of, you know, for you, you have a very unique perspective. You have seven different states that you operate in with where we are in the current environment of, of on-premise uh, kind of in the, the situations where we have in front of us. What is it like running uh, which, between seven different states regulatory wise and every all the other challenges that exist currently in the restaurant industry? <laughs> That's a loaded, that's a, that's a question. Question. I loaded question. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would say just regulatorily, it was hard before COVID. Um, you know, uh, a lot of different rules, different states, and, and those type of things. 
But then during COVID, you know, as a franchisor, having franchisees, very challenging because uh, Pennsylvania was different than New York. New York was different than New Jersey. Massachusetts was different than, than that. And then we had Florida that really never shut down. So that, that was probably the easiest to manage was, <laughs> was Florida. But um, you were constantly looking at what are the rules. We, we opened the store in October of 2020. So there was a lot of curveballs there in the opening, the staffing, you know, being at 25% opening a store, um, you know, so it, it, the restaurant business is already hard. Uh, and I think a lot of the new things that have been put on us, as well as the labor challenges, uh, have made it even harder. You, was part of the transition into some of the grab and go stuff at Giant, was that before COVID or did you see that as maybe a new revenue stream in the kind of the new world that we're looking at and trying to face some of the challenges of the, just the on-premise business. Um, so, you know, was, was that a, was that something that you thought you were moving towards before, or was this kind of an idea that was born out of, you know, necessity? It, it, uh, I, I would say it was, it was born out of necessity, but born out of opportunity. Absolutely. So, so we, yeah. we, we looked at um, how could we COVID proof ourselves? Um, you know, how do we, um, continue to keep the commissary employees working. Um, you know, that was one of the things is, is because of that, you know, commissary production dropped substantially during COVID. So now you have a challenge of weighing and keeping your employees. When does COVID come back? So we looked at some rev other revenue opportunities, you know, like, like this giant partnership. Um, we've also uh, partnered our large pretzels with uh, Cisco Philadelphia in that market. So we were able to keep the commissary employees employed during COVID. Um, so, so that kind of happened, you know, as a, as a thought of how do we get into the retail game? Cause the grocery stores are killing it while we're closed down. And, uh, you know, I kind of say luck is when opportunity and preparation meet. Yes. Uh, it, you know, it, it's interesting to, to see, and part of what we wanted to do this podcast for was, was seeing how people saw the challenges in front of them and how they overcame them. And, uh, I, I think that's a perfect example of seeing opportunity, not necessity, but opportunity. Uh, and, and, and the ability to keep your employees working, man. I mean, not a lot of companies were able to do that. I, I give you a lot of credit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it was challenging and, and uh, you know, we didn't know where it was going to go, but, um, you know, I, 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 fortunately we, we've been around for over a decade plus. So we were in a, in a, in a stable position, um, you know, but just, just, you know, new restaurant tours. I can't imagine if you didn't even learn the game yet. Um, how that, how that experience was. So it's definitely been something that, you know, it's been, uh, you know, work in progress for, for everybody. So, so Gary, one of the things too, is we're going to throw like a little bit of curveball stuff here with some, some anecdotal personal things. We're, we're going to put it, put it on the spot here. Uh, what would 18 year old <laughs> you say to today's you? Would he believe that this guy exists? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I, I, I took a lo little bit longer. I've, I've been kind of always uh, entrepreneurial in, in spirit, but, uh, but, but I had to learn my way. So, you know, uh, I guess, I, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would change much of what I, what I did because I think even uh the negative things were learning lessons that I think got me to, to, to where I'm at, which is, you know, I like to say ha happy, not satisfied, um, in, in my life. But, but I, but I don't, I don't know that my 18 year old me would, would have, would have think I've, 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 uh, gotten here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary, he threw this question on me at the first, he threw this question on me at the first podcast too. And, and I said, I said a very similar thing here that the, the challenges that you went through shaped the, the person you are today. I don't think that my 18 year old self would have believed that I would be here. Uh, but, but, it, but I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have to agree. I think that's exactly how I saw it as well is that if you didn't go through what you went through, you wouldn't have been able to deal with some of the problems or the challenges that, that you saw or, or maybe have the uh, you know, gone and made that mistake before and been like, I'm not going to make that mistake again. My, and my yeah. 18 year old self was working of cases of beer in the back of a warehouse for a summer job. So I didn't really think that I didn't, I hated the industry at 18. <laughs> so here we are 17 <laughs> years later. So, <laughs> yeah, well, no, no doubt. Last one, last one for you, Gary, and, and we'll let you go here is uh, what's one, one thing that uh, was just like a, a, a success of any scale that you weren't expecting? 
like something you, you kind of were just like, let's go try this out and it ended up being a home run and, 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 and whatever scale. You know, I, I would probably say the, the, fran- the, the franchise uh, aspect was, was probably that for me, you know, um, you know, it was, a, it was a dream. And, and honestly, probably if we had not won the contest, I don't know that it would have happened um, because, you know, winning the contest gave us a regiment, uh, you know, it would cost a lot of money to get franchised properly, you know, so it, in your early years, do you put out this a lot of money for a dream? So, so I think, you know, that probably was the biggest surprise or, or, or win, because I also think uh, that win propelled all the other things that happened, you know, to, to get some of the, the products or the commissary or the distribution, you have to have locations and it's kind of all been a stepping stone from there. But uh, had we not won the contest and not had franchise locations, um, I don't think a lot of the other stuff would have came with it. Excellent. Well, hey, we want to we want to thank you for your time today, Gary. It was really awesome to get the insights as far as the history of you, the history of the operation, and kind of the, a little bit of a peek in the backside of things. A lot of times, one of the things we like to showcase is all the different aspects and all the different mechanics of of the industry that a lot of people don't get to see when they just come in, enjoy their meal, have a great experience, and then head home. There's a lot of things behind the scenes we all know about, and we want to kind of bring those things to light. And uh, you just you have a very multifaceted business, obviously multi-state operation, and it's uh, very commendable for what you're doing. So we want to kind of in closing, kind of let everybody know, keep an eye out for uh, Arugas. There's uh, seven states with a new one opening up in the College of New Jersey come December, January of this year, and uh, we have I'm sure a lot more on the on the horizon. So keep an eye out for uh, Arugas uh, Sports Bar coming near you, or that Segura Vodka. And, Absolutely. Uh, new flavors coming as well. Or apparently now RTDs. Scary. What, <laughs> I, who knows? I mean, really, what what else? What, what's what is there something else that we don't know about? Do you want to drop on us right here? Like a limited, hey, look, exclusive release. Aruga's owner telling us right now this is the next thing coming. You know, I, I don't I, I don't have anything exclusive, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we'll bring we'll bring you back for a return announcement next yeah. time. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Yes, well, I appreciate great. talking to you guys. It's great catching up uh, as well. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Gary. You have a great day. Thanks, Gary. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.